Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name's Andrew Dinn, and I'm a solutions architect here at Perfect Image. Uh, this afternoon, we're going to be looking at should you deploy ClickSense Enterprise into the public cloud? Um, this afternoon, we're going to be looking at a few things, such as why choose the cloud, how to reduce costs, scale your click environment to meet capacity needs, and benefit from scalability and flexibility, and how to make your ClickSense hub easier uh, to access when working from home as well. We're going to be looking at a few other things in there as well, such as an overview of the, the two biggest cloud offerings in the world, uh, Microsoft Azure and AWS. Uh, ClickSense enterprise deployment options and considerations, just in general. Uh, how to make a use case for ClickSense cloud deployments. And also how you should use the cloud to save costs and increase functionality. Um, if you've got any questions as we go through this afternoon's webinar, feel free just to reach out in the chat or the, the, the Q&A. And should we have time at the end, um, we, we, we'll try and get around to some of them questions if we do. So. Most of the people on the call today, I'm presuming, know what ClickSense is, um, might currently be using ClickSense, but just in case, let's take 30 seconds out, just to recap for anyone who might be coming at this from going, I don't know what ClickSense is at all. Um, so ClickSense sets the benchmark for third generation analytical platforms, empowering everyone in your organization to make data-driven decisions. It's built on Click's unique associative engine, it supports a full range of users and use cases across the life cycle from data to the insight, um, self-serve analytics, interactive dashboards, conversational analytics, custom and embedded ana analytics, mobile analytics, and reporting and alerting. It augments and enhances human intuition with AI-powered insight suggestions, automation, and natural language interaction. So as I say, I'm sure most of you on the call today are aware of what Click and ClickSense are, but I did just want to take that moment to recap that. And as we've already said, what we're going to be looking at this afternoon is should we be putting this into the public cloud? So I suppose a good place to start in here is let's just talk about what is public cloud a little bit. So the public cloud is defined as a computing service offered by third party providers over the public internet, making them available to anyone who wants to use or purchase them. Public clouds can save companies from the expensive costs of having to purchase, manage and maintain on-premise hardware and application infrastructure. The public cloud provider is held responsible for all of the management and maintenance of the system. Public clouds can also de be deployed faster than on-premise infrastructure and with an infinitely scalable platform. Every employee of a company can use the same application from any office or any branch uh, using any device of their choice, as long as they can access the internet. Um, while security concerns have been raised over the public cloud environments, when implemented correctly, the public cloud can be as secure as the most efficiently managed private cloud implementations, as long as the provider uses proper security methods. So, as I said, Let's maybe just have a little look at two examples of public clouds. Um, so two examples of public clouds would be Azure by Microsoft and Amazon Web Services, also known as AWS, uh, which is hosted by Amazon. They both have a wide breadth of features ranging from analytics, big data solutions, uh, IoT uh, solutions, IoT streaming, mobile app development. And what we're interested in for today's webinar is compute resources. So this is virtual machines. This is where we can use a Windows um, operating system server and where we can install the Click software on there. So what we've seen over the last 12 months and certainly most recently, we've seen a, a large movement of business intelligence moving to the cloud. And I think it's important to look at some of the drivers for this. Um, so obviously some of the things we've got on screen there is around cost reduction. How do we actually reduce our cost, which obviously at the moment, which obviously we want to try and save every penny in our business as possible. We want to increase business agility. So actually we want to have the agility within our solutions to actually go from a, an office environment to a working from home office, uh, a working from home environment overnight. We want to incre increase collaboration. We want to have scalable resources. So the minute we have large demand, again, we can account for that. 
we want to try and outsource some of that responsibility so anything where we've got in-house tasks and jobs we've got to manage if we can get rid of any of that responsibility again that is a great bonus within there as well we want to increase levels of performance and we want to increase competitiveness let's remember everything we're trying to do here is to almost stay ahead of the curve and again i think the big thing we can round up here is actually we're just trying to provide a better level of flexibility for everything we're trying to do within our organizations today so let's take a moment to maybe recap um, or maybe inform for some of you guys who you might not know actually some of the different deployment options we've got with ClickSense Enterprise today. So as I said, most of the people on the call, um, and I say most of the people, this is certainly where we see a large client base um, at the moment have ClickSense, they, they manage that software themselves and they, they choose to deploy that on-premise, whether that's physical infrastructure or if you've got some virtualized infrastructure in there as well, we're still classing that as on-premise hardware as well. But what we do also have available is Click, uh, Click Software as a service offering. Now we're not gonna be talking about that today. This is not sort of the sort of the cloud version we're going down the route of. Um, we are going to be focusing on that client managed side where, where we as the client look after it. Now we could deploy that in private cloud, whether that's uh, private data centers from um, IT providers or actually data centers we as a, as a, as a business ourselves hold. Um, but actually, as we've already mentioned, we are going to be looking down that public cloud route. And again, we've already mentioned the likes of AWS, Azure, Google Cloud Platform. What we're really going to be looking at is how do you deploy um, click sense enterprise into these into these offerings and actually what's the benefit of that so again as we maybe just wanted to recap on some of the the deployment considerations there again why we're looking at the sort of the public cloud offering is again that's where we see most users sort of using the value add products products within there um, and really that's what we're going to be covering today so Let's have a look at some of the benefits of using public cloud. And we're going to go through each, each one of these in a little bit more detail. But we've got the likes of running hours, actually being able to choose when these servers operate and actually when they run. We've got the flexibility of scaling in there. So again, we've already said, how do we try and meet demand and how, how do we try and actually easily scale for the future as we want to grow these click estates and have more and more users within our organizations using click. We can start a cluster things within there as well, actually have servers within clusters and break down one big server, which we see quite often into more smallable manageable servers within there. Again, we've got some other benefits on screen, which we'll certainly go through. But let's start off and have a look at the, the running hours premise. So I suppose before I dive into this in too much more detail, what I really wanna try and get across with this webinar is these are these are just ideas. I'm certainly not sitting here today and telling everyone on the call they should go and implement all of these features or that all of these features would actually work for your business. I suppose what I really just want to try and highlight is actually some of the some of the things we see with clients and have quite conversations with quite frequently and almost just highlight some of them features to say maybe these are of interest, maybe these would benefit you. But as I say, Anything here you, you, you're you interested in today, feel free to reach out after the webinar and we can obviously talk about how this would work in your use case and actually would it benefit your organization. But as we say, sorry, um, running hours. So what we've got here is we, we want to deploy a server um, and actually we, we want to run this for 24 hours. So this would be from midnight to midnight, seven days a week. And actually you'll see there, we've got 24 blue boxes almost denoting that 24 hour duration of a single day. Um, and let's just for, for, for price and takes, let's say this is a, this is a modest click estate. We want to have a look at a Windows server um, with eight cores and 32 gig of RAM. Now for me, just to go and spin up a server in Azure today, um, that's going to cost me about five and a half thousand pound a year to run that server of that size for 24 hours, which is great. But actually, no one actually uses my click server 24 hours of the day. Pe people are sleeping. I'm, I'm a UK organization. Um, I, I know my click state only being used within the UK, so I don't have to worry about time zones. So maybe actually what I want to do 
is actually just run my my click estate for selected hours of the day so actually if we have a look at this maybe i want to be quite conservative within here and say right well actually i only need to run this for 14 hours i want to turn it on at six o'clock in the morning i'm happy for it to be turned off at eight o'clock at night i know no one's really going to be using it during that time actually to do that that would actually only cost me just over three thousand pounds that's a yearly saving of almost two and a half thousand pounds that's 42 percent of my original spend so again, I, I appreciate some of these working hours might not be, be sort of accurate for yourselves. You, you may have to go from 14 hours to 20 hours. Maybe you can actually go down to seven hours. But again, it's just this idea of when this is not being in use, we can actually pause that and actually have a direct cost saving uh, by, not, by not just leaving it running when no one's actually using this. Now, that's great. So I've now got a cost saving of almost two and a half thousand pounds. Well, at this point, I want to be almost a little bit cheeky and I maybe want to spend some of that. So let's just take that server there and that, that £3,000 cost um, we were using for that six to eight o'clock running hours. And I want to use that as my production environment. So that's where I want my users to go and consume applications. That's where I want them to use their dashboards. They all know and love. Great. Actually, what we see quite a lot with customers is especially under any subscription purchase, they actually have a, a test or development license for free. Or you might have purchased one in the past as well, but people, we see a lot of customers not actually taking advantage of that test or development license because you know they, they don't want to have to spin up another server. They don't want to have to go to IT and ask for more resources within there. Well, actually this makes it very, very easy now because where I was, I want my production environment to run seven days a week. What I want to do is actually run another environment. And again, we're going to go for A cores. We're going to go for 32 gig RAM. We want it to be exactly the same server spec. But actually, I only need that to run from 10 o'clock to 5 o'clock, for example. Because I know that by the time I get into the office, I, I answer my emails, I go grab a coffee. I know I'm not actually going to get around to doing any app development till 10 o'clock. And I know I'm going to clock off about 5 o'clock and go home. But again, I want to I want to use that test and development license I've already got in an isolated environment. That means I don't have to worry about actually affecting any of my end users. If I make any make any mistakes, if I have a big synthetic key which actually spirals my RAM out of control, I know I'm not going to affect my end users. So I'm in that isolated environment. I'm running seven day seven hours, five days a week, and that is there for my app creation and my testing. And again, being able to do that would actually only cost me just over a thousand pound a year. Now, obviously I can take some of that cost savings I had in the last screen. I can spend a little bit on this tested dev environment, but again, I am still being able to save money in doing this. And I get the added benefit and flexibility of that test and development environment as well. So that's a little bit around some of the running hours. Um, now what I want to do is maybe just have a look at some of the, the scaling options and again, how flexible public cloud could be to actually start scaling out my environments as well. Um, so I currently have a, a four core server, 16 gig of RAM, I'm running ClickSense on it, but it's really hitting the limits there. You know, I've, I've released a new dashboard um, around COVID response maybe, and actually the uptake of that dashboard has been far greater than I ever expected. And I need to quickly scale the infrastructure I'm now using. Now, if I've got on-premise infrastructure, maybe I need to go to IT. Maybe that needs to be provisioned and built. Uh, maybe there's, there's no physical infrastructure left or space. So now it's in the realms of, right, we need to go buy more infrastructure. Um, actually, that is not the case with public cloud because what I can do very, very easy is say, I want to go from a four core server to an eight core server and I want to double the resources within here. So again, what we've actually got on screen at the moment is just an example of that happening within Microsoft Azure. So what we can see there is we've got a four core server with 16 gig of RAM. I'm gonna go and choose the size I'm interested in. So now we see a list of all the possible server sizes and all the specifications we've got in there. I want A cores, 32 gig of RAM. I can hit resize on there now. And again, you'll notice it's actually resizing it as, as we speak. And I think the key thing to get across here is I'm not saying it's going to be as easy to do this 
Um, do you know what I mean? If we need to go through IT, there might be some processes. But what I'm trying to surface is it could be this easy. And actually with cloud, we have the flexibility to actually make this a reality. So now you'll see there, if after I've refreshed that screen, that server has now jumped to an eight core 32 gig of RAM server. So again, I've been able to massively increase almost, well, I've been physically able to double the resources I've got available in a matter of seconds there. So let's take the last two concepts, i.e. the scale in which we've just looked at how easy it is to scale, and actually the running hours concept, and maybe let's put them two together now. So I run quite a big server in here, it calls 32 gig of RAMs, and I currently run that 24 hours a day, uh, and that costs me five and a half thousand pounds. Now, what I could do is I could choose to turn it off for a few hours overnight. However, this time I'm a global organization. I've got people in lots of different time zones accessing it. I can't afford for someone not to be able to go and access ClickSense when they need it. So I can't just completely turn it off. Okay, well, let's let's actually combine that scaling um, idea. And actually what we could do is say, right, well, I want it to run at a big size some of the time. And I also want it to run at a smaller size, um, so a few hours in the day. So there we go. Let's let's just put a bit of a use case behind this. So maybe during the, the hours of six and eight, um, largely a UK user group there. So we, we needed to run at full capacity, big size. Actually, overnight, I might just have the odd person dropping in to do some last minute work. Uh, maybe they're working late one night, so I do need it available, but I can half the resources within there because I've got nowhere near the user demand um, that we would have during the hours of six and eight. So again, what we could do is actually start to scale that compute um, and scale the servers we're using at any point in time during the day. And again, by actually doing it this way, I've actually almost reduced my cost to almost just over £4,000. So again, that's a, that's a yearly saving in this example of over £1,000. That's almost 22% of my original spend. And again, these are just some ideas around some of the figures, some of the numbers. This is, as we've already said, this is really just to start surfacing some ideas where we can hopefully have a bit more of an in-depth conversation about a later date. So that's great. Maybe what we want to do now is have a look at some of the, the ability to, to actually cluster ClickSense. So I want to just almost take a step back and talk about some of the different deployment methods we've got for ClickSense. So what you'll notice on screen here under example A is we've got one site, one server, which obviously you can see there is bordered by that black line. And actually we've got the five main components which are used to run ClickSense on that one server. So the very typical out of the box deployment within here, everything we need to run Click is on one server and it's run quite a large server. Actually, if we now have a look at example B, what you'll actually notice here is we've actually split this between two servers. We've actually split some of the responsibilities onto the different servers. So in this example, what we've actually got there is that top server acting as the RIM node is actually responsible for actually users being able to consume applications. So when a business user comes in and they go to my ClickSense hub, that is the server they're going to be hitting to consume that application. Now, the second server underneath that, which is actually called the central node in this example, is actually responsible for, you'll see on there, we've got the scheduler, the repository in that application. So that is where all my data is stored and any refreshes of data, that is exactly where that processing is happening. Now, what's really, really beneficial about this example is actually if I have some reloads, which are going on during the day, I know they're not actually stealing resources and they're not actually stealing any performance from my end users because we've completely separated the two different tasks within there. And again, if we wanted to build this up one step further and we've got example C in there, again, you'll notice this time we've got three servers within there and we can start to build this out. And again, depend upon your use case, we could build this out to be very complex, very large, but again, providing a lot of benefit within there. But let's take them principles and have a look at actually what we could do with some of that in the public cloud. So again, as we've already said, we've got one big server, um, it's running all of them five components on there. Maybe what we actually want to do within here is provide some element of high availability. 
So at the minute, if something was to go wrong with this server and this server was to go down, my users can't access, access ClickSense at all. And now that's not good enough for me. I need ClickSense always running. I need my, as soon as a business user has a question, I need them to be able to answer that. So maybe what we wanna do is take that same resource power, but actually split it across two different servers. And again, what we can do there is we can actually start to split the responsibilities across our different servers. Um, so actually each server can act and do, do whatever's best in it in that particular use case. But what we're seeing here is, if for whatever reason, one of them servers was to go down, so we'll just put a nice big red strike through that, to know that doesn't exist anymore. Actually, we've still got a server available for people that can start consuming ClickSense within there. But again, we've not actually done anything amazing within here. All we've actually done is take the resources we already have and actually split them in two to again, provide some um, high availability and obviously some flexibility and benefits to our users consuming ClickSense. Now, let's take that example we had a look in there as well. We, now we've split them across the two servers. Actually, there's nothing stopping us taking the, the good knowledge we had from earlier on and actually saying again, what we could start to do is we could start to scale some of these servers and we could start to cut them back between certain hours. So obviously now on the far right hand side there, again, you'll notice we can just actually reduce some of the compute power within there for certain times. So again, maybe overnight, we just want to turn that down a little bit or whatever the case may be. And again, you're going to see some of the price savings that we saw on the earlier slides within there. Having a look at some of the next benefits within here as well is really just the the, the regions of the cloud providers and actually where they have their data centers uh, across the world within here. So obviously we, we've got all of the Azure regions within here, so we can actually see where the data centers are and within it, within Azure. And again, we've got a similar sort of story for AWS. Again, you'll notice the vast amount of data centers across the world here. And I think that's one of the key things is these are really global, uh, global solutions we can start to um, take advantage of. And I think some of the benefits become, so we, we were talking to a customer earlier, um, sort of a, a, a few weeks ago, where they, they want to be able to provide this to a new user base in Australia. But it made no sense for them to be sat in the UK with physical infrastructure in their office, which is trying to be accessed by users in Australia. So the, the key thing there was, great, we'll go spin up an instance of Click in Sydney, in Australia, it's close to the users, they're gonna have less, in, uh, less sort of interference, they're gonna have better performance because it's physically closer to them and actually they'll have a much better experience of Click by actually this being located physically closer to them. One of the other benefits we mentioned um, at the start there as well is, is the Kubernetes services hosted by these cloud providers. Now, I don't really want to dive too much into what Kubernetes is. Um, on the simplest surface, think of it as another way of deploying ClickSense by not using Windows. And by not using Windows, we're going to be using Linux. Um, and we're going to use Kubernetes to actually help us do that. So Kubernetes is an open source platform that automates Linux container operations. It limit, eliminates many of the manual processes involved in deploying and scaling centralized applications. So in other words, you can cluster together uh, groups of hosts or servers that are running Linux containers and Kubernetes helps you easily and effectively manage those clusters. Now, what we have the sense of with in Kubernetes is this idea of pods. So you'll notice on the screen there, we've got a lot of different colored pods. Uh, so we've got a pod in there, which is called engine. That pod is responsible for running the little bit of the software, which is the click engine. We've got a pod in there for licenses. Again, the pod, which is responsible for actually making sure your click sense software is licensed. You've got one for the hub in there as well. So again, it's that little bit of the software, which is responsible for actually serving the click sense hub. Now, what we're seeing within here as well, though, is what's really, really great about this Kubernetes software is actually the ability to scale that 
on demand when is needed. So the minute actually we have a load of users in our hub, actually we can scale the hub pods in there and it'll account for them resources. The minute we have something around the engine, again, that pods can just start to scale within there. And again, if we're taking advantage of something like the Azure Kubernetes service or Amazon's Elastic Kubernetes service, um, again, these can just be set to auto scale. So again, we have that level of flexibility to meet the capacity as it comes in. As I say, I don't want to touch too much on the Kubernetes side. Um, if anyone does want to go a little bit more in depth around it, um, feel free to reach out. Again, there does become functionality differences in, in terms of how the software actually used once it's deployed on there as well. So as I say, I'll leave it there, but, but reach out. Um, we mentioned earlier on as well, we, we wanted to try and reduce costs. And one of the ways to try and reduce costs in there was to almost try and give up some of the responsibility we needed to actually run infrastructure. Um, so you'll notice on there, we, we've got on-premise infrastructure. Um, actually, uh, the, the, the customer is responsible for doing everything on there. When they start taking infrastructure as a service, which is what we're really talking about there, you'll notice we lose some of the responsibility within there. Again, if you want to consume as a platform as a service or software as a service, we start to reduce the responsibilities within there as well. We've already mentioned um, security and actually sometimes there are security concerns um, when we start talking about public clouds, but I think the key thing to note here is we don't need to have them concerns. The data can be the data is encrypted in these data centers. It's secure, and as long as we it's all set up correctly, it can be just as secure, if not more secure, than physical on-premise infrastructure as well. I am conscious of time, so I am going to just skip over the the next slide in a little, sort of a little bit less detail than I was going to. But in essence. Inherently by using cloud software, it's backed up, whether that's multiple times in the same data center, different data centers, data centers across the UK, or actually into different countries and regions in there as well. Now, what we did also mention as well is some of the benefits that actually using the sort of the public cloud will offer us is some benefit when it comes to working from home. So that's using the likes of Azure Active Directory login. So for anyone using 365, we can start to actually use some of that, we can set up conditional access. So actually we can be really, really secure about actually when people come to log in, are they gonna present with multi-factor authentication? Are they in a place where we would expect them to be? So we're not allowing someone um, across half the world to start logging in, we can start to geofence it down. And again, the Azure proxy will be better explained by an example. As we said, anyone using 365 can start a login to click using that. Um, experience they're already used to that can be presented with multi-factor authentication if that's set up. So in this short example here, what we've actually got is myself logging in with my, my 365 um, username and password. And again, as I go through that process, I don't have MFA set up in this example, but again, I log into ClickSense, but it's made it really, really easy for me to actually be able to log into my Click Estate while I'm working from home and I'm not in the office and I'm not using my work laptop maybe. That is your proxy route. What we're actually saying here is if you want to leave your ClickSense Enterprise deployment um, on premise, we can actually still use some of the public cloud features to actually make this really easy um, and accessible while working from home as well. So obviously in this diagram, you'll notice your, your on premise infrastructure is denoted by being behind your firewall. And we can actually use the Azure proxy to actually allow you to have access to that while you're working from home without the need to expose that outside of your firewall. So actually this time I'm just going to come into the Office portal. I'm going to log in with them same um, Office 365 credentials. Now importantly, what you'll notice is you'll see click sense there alongside Outlook, Office, all my other sort of my all my other um, primary applications and directly get into click sense even though I'm working from home and even though the server is physically behind my firewall within there as well. Because it's so easy to expose as well, and actually it makes it easier um, to be publicly facing, it does make it easier to embed into frontline applications as well. So if we need to embed in a Salesforce CRM, and these, these software as a service applications, we can very quickly easily do that as well. We've already talked about some of the sort of the cost savings within here. 
what we're actually looking at on screen is if we were just to take that very simple clicker state, actually put it into Azure, we could actually save money by actually just doing that alone. Now, this takes into account sort of the electricity costs, um, cooling costs, the labor costs to maintain. So again, although we've already talked about a lot of goods cost savings, there's already more cost savings by just putting this into the public cloud as well. We can have even more cost savings if we actually want to commit to these vendors, whether that's a UR or AWS, that way we're going to actually use their services um, for some time. So actually, if we were going to say, right, we're definitely going to use this for a year, there's actually up to 60, 60% cost savings on the prices you've seen already within this slide deck. If you were to go and commit for three years, again, there's even more cost savings to be had there. If you guys want to go have a little play with this maybe and have a little look at actually how does this work within the public cloud, there is actually two marketplace offerings, both within AWS and Azure, where you can go get started and bring your own ClickSense license key and at a push of a button, spin up a, a virtualized um, ClickSense environment in these um in these public clouds and start consuming it that way. As I say, if you want to maybe be a little bit more serious about it and actually you're thinking about doing this um, in a production environment, feel free to reach out and ask for advice from us as Perfect Image. So in summary, I realize we've gone through quite a lot in quite little time today, but I think there's, there's three main things to take away from here. And it's really around some of the cost effectiveness that actually we get, which is offered by using the public cloud. It's the reliability of the services. And most importantly, it's the flexibility. Actually, it's being able to not have to commit to everything upfront, being able to quickly change, being able to quickly deploy, being able to quickly size, turn on or off whenever we need. And it's about how we start to use these services. One last thing I do want to call out, I'm very conscious we've spoke about putting ClickSense in the public cloud. We did say there was other options around Kubernetes using ClickSAS option. Maybe we want to have a little bit in AWS and a little bit in Azure. We can actually use all of these things together. We're not saying you actually have to put your full clicker state into a single environment. It can be consumed across all. Couple of things um, to mention in terms of incentives and free consultations. If you want to have maybe have a conversation and a consultation around some of your click infrastructure uh, and architecture and how that should be laid out to best serve your users, feel free to reach out. If you're interested in consuming ClickSense um, just as a managed service, again, feel free to reach out. What we've spoke about today is actually ClickSense in the cloud. If you maybe want to have a look at everything within your organization, whether that's applications, databases, all your computes, everything virtualized, everything wider than just click, again, reach out for a cloud readiness assessment within there as well, and we can talk you through that. Um, as I say, thank you all very much for joining this afternoon. Apologies, we've ran over by a couple of minutes, but thank you all for joining. If you've got any questions um, or want to go through anything in more detail and understand how this could work for you, feel free to reach out. If you've got any questions about Click as a whole, again, feel free just to reach out. We are actually a Click Elite Solution provider in there. We actually are Click's number one um, Elite Solution provider for the last two years. And um, we've got all the contact details on screen, including mine. Again, thank you for joining this afternoon. Have a great week.